Recently, planner IEMs has taken the internet by storm. But what exactly is a planner and why is it good? We'll answer that with this three IEMs we're going to review today. Talk about the pros and cons so you'll know if these stuff is the right choice for you. So get comfy and let's get started right now. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my triple review of the 7Hz Timeless, Soundnotes Dioco and the LED Schwower S12. These IEMs, especially the Timeless, are some of the most discussed IEM this year and so I wanted to take my time, really listen to them and after many months, I'm finally ready to give my thoughts. As usual, my full disclosure is down in the description below. Basically, my reviews will always be my own honest opinion. And if you're interested in checking out any of these IEMs mentioned, please buy using my affiliate links below. You can also give out a super thanks. I would much appreciate all of your support. And let's just get started with the planners already, right? Just in case you're wondering, a planner magnetic driver is a type of driver that consists of one thin plane that's moved by two magnets sandwich style. The advantage to this is pretty much speed, which means the two magnets move the plane diaphragm faster than dynamic drivers and thus produce more accurate sound. Problem is, this was seen only in big, heavy, expensive headphones until 2022 comes and many companies release relatively affordable planner IEMs. Then, people started going crazy. Of course, don't quote me in that last part. I'm sure there were planner IEMs in the past. I'm aware one from Audis, but price is a big factor. And that's where we're going to start first. This is some of the cheapest planners you can get right now. And that's the 100 buck Salnotes Dioco. So this is a collab release between 7Hz and Critical. I mean, who doesn't know Critical? If you're into audio, at least you've seen his graph work somewhere. But yeah, let's talk about how these sound. This is a treble focus IEM. So it's light on bass, bright on treble. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's probably what we call an analytical sound. It has a characteristic that bears it all, revealing details and imperfections easily, but as a result, it may come as harsh sounding and less dynamic, especially to those who are not used to it. Having said that, resolution is top notch, which means you can hear subtle details very easily. And for $100, this blows dynamic driver competition away. Heck, it's even better than the Moondrop Kato that's almost twice the price. Well, at least strictly talking about resolution. What's also surprised me is the soundstage that's very wide and well spread out. Although if the Kato has depth in play, the Dioko only spreads it in one flat plane but very wide, flat plane. Now, one downside of planners, at least in headphones, is they are hard to drive because of that huge magnetic sandwich. So to get a good sound, they require a separate amplifier and that doesn't come cheap. In IEMs though, that's not as big of a problem since these sound just as good plugged in through with this, whatever, Apple dongle or a dedicated FIO BTR5 DAC. And by the way, my source is Apple Music Lossless here and all IEMs tested are with 3.5 millimeter unbalanced cable. But if all these means mumbo jumbo to you, then don't worry. I'm simply saying IEMs are far less demanding when it comes to power. So you can enjoy them without any extra equipment, whether it's straight to your phone, straight to your laptop, or even if you have a dedicated deck, that's good. But having said that, the Soundnotes Dioco is actually a little bit harder to drive as the volume for my BTR5 is about two clicks lower compared to the Timeless and even more so compared to the S12, which we'll talk in a bit. Now, let's take some song examples and give you an idea of how the Dioco sounds. Firstly, the vocals in Heartache by One OK Rock take a step back, but it is accompanied by very well separated instruments spread wide to the sides. Bass is not too thumpy, but enough to enjoy the song. And finally, everything is enveloped by a nice roomy echo creating that moody atmosphere. It sounds good until you bump into something like Don't Stop Me Now by Queen, which shows the sibilance with every S's, T's, and also every tambourine hits. It honestly sounds like the real thing, which basically means it's annoying. <laughs> but in the rap part of Black or White by Michael Jackson, 
it actually got worse. The very bright treble makes every percussion hit quite unbearable. Then throughout the song, the bass feels lacking just a bit more punch. But it's a trait of this treble focus tuning and well, I know some people just like it. So genre wise, well, I think it's good for classical, rock, softer acoustic pop songs, even live will be great, but definitely pick a dynamic driver instead if you listen to EDM songs or just prefer more bass in general, because the Moondrop Kato, which is already a bit borderline in bass, is actually much punchier than the Dioko. Finally, talking about fit, this is one of the tighter side because these IEMs are quite bulky and heavy, which may get uncomfortable after a few years, especially on smaller ears because it you know constantly puts pressure on your bottom ear here. But otherwise, it's got great build quality. The IEMs look nice with this tempered glass touch. The cable is great too. It's got metal connectors, nice and thick build. Probably the only thing that I could complain is the neck shinge that is so impractical to move because it's too small for these thicker cables. So you have to pull it real hard to move it, almost as hard as you're breaking the cable and you'll just set it once and forget about readjusting. At least it's got a super fancy carrying case for a hundred bucks, but again, the size is so big, which makes it impractical to bring with you unless you carry a backpack everywhere. Anyway, hit the thumbs up if you found the video useful so far. Let me know what do you think of this review format and let's continue to a step up in price, the 150 bucks Let's for S12. For simplicity's sake, I'll just call it the S12. Sound-wise, it's got a balanced tuning with more aggressive V-shape for stronger sub-bass rumble and mid-bass punch on the low end. Then on the other side, it's accompanied by stronger upper mid presence, which I like, but it's got some peaks on the treble end that may feel sibilant sometimes. Detail resolution is what you expect from a planner. They're amazing. You will notice small things without you even looking for them. Sound stage is well spread out, Definitely wider than the Timeless, which we'll talk about after this. Just vocals take a step backwards to give space for the instruments. Also, volume is actually the loudest of the three here, so maybe it's because of the more boosted tuning or the driver design is easier to drive. One can only wonder. I've enjoyed my time listening to the S12, and here are some of my highlights. In Hotel California by Eagles, you can hear precise positioning of the hi-hats, the bass, the two different electric guitars, including a third acoustic one later coming from different sides, and the vocals are nicely separated in the center of everything. Bass lines and drum kicks take a dominant place in the mix, but that said, everything else is not drowned out. You still get great detail and separation even after all the instruments just come together. The song never felt crowded on the S12. Next up, Fall In Love Alone. While being a recent song that I fell in love to, <laughs> it sounds punchy and fun. Although I feel like bass may be a smidge too dominant for my liking, but the vocal presence, treble details, the instrumentation are exceptional as you'd expect from a planner. Female vocal in Monster by Yosobi has the perfect amount of upper mid presence, but most importantly, the surging sub bass throughout the song is the strongest of the three IEMs reviewed here. It has great detail, great texture too, so it's not like that muddy kind of bass. You can still easily distinguish the guitars and pianos aside from all those bass, and it's just a really fun sound. Overall, the S12 is suitable for bass focus tracks like modern pop, EDM, or even rock, but keep in mind it could be too bassy for soft acoustics, classical songs, and the like. And yeah, fit-wise, the S12 is generally comfortable with the right ear tips. As you can see, it looks like this. We have a high quality and thick cables with metal connectors and easily movable neck shinge, although that's still made of plastic. Just one thing with the cable is it has a tendency to fall out out of the outer ear curve like this, so you need to tighten the neck shinge a bit more than usual. That's not that much of a big deal though, because carrying case is the best of the bunch, because they're oval shaped, which means you can roll the S12 into your four fingers and zip them into the case effortlessly. And most importantly, the size is very pocketable. As a package, Let Shore is a very appealing choice, and I really think it's something that you just can't go wrong with.
Speaking of which, this last planner is also something that you cannot go wrong with. To, to be a crowd pleaser, this is the 220 bucks 7 hertz timeless. I know that price may come as a bit of a sticker shock, especially for the regulars at this channel, but trust me, these are the goods. The Timeless has a balanced tuning with plenty of bass and just the right amount of crispy treble without ever sounding harsh. It's really one of those earbuds that you'll instantly like on your first listen. Naturally, as a planner, it's got incredible detail resolution. The sound of lip smacking, the subtlest guitar plucks, it's something that you don't hear on your typical dynamic driver IEMs, but it is easy to notice here. If there's one thing to nitpick, soundstage is actually the most compressed out of the three, which is mostly due to the tuning. But having said that, projection of where each instruments are coming from is still very good. Now let's take some song examples and talk about its traits. Firstly, in Fearless by Taylor Swift, you can feel that every drum kick is palpable. You can easily distinguish the guitar and ukulele. Vocals are right in the center, like being hugged by the bass. It's a very nice sound that never felt harsh, which can happen on this song because just the whole mix is quite sibilant. Next up, the bass in Black or White by Michael Jackson. It's accurate yet punchy. It's so good to the point you would just bang your heads to the beat without you noticing. And overall, the song just sounds very dynamic. Moreover, instruments are very well separated and detailed. Not the most in-your-face vocals, but it is clear and full-bodied. Top it off with just the right amount of presence and brightness on the treble end, and it never feels crowded even in the busiest parts. To be honest, this is one of the most versatile tuning compared to the three. It's bassy, but not too rumbly. The treble is crisp, but not too harsh. You can basically throw anything at it and it will sound amazing. Seriously, if you have a local audio store that can give you a trial of these or the other two, I definitely want to know your first impressions. You can leave them down in the comments below. Okay, finally talking about the fit. The Timeless is actually the most comfortable IEM to wear in this video. I've worn this for hours and hours on end. It stays well, it never hurts. And you know, just make sure that you are using the right ear tips. And actually that's the case with most IEM purchases because you got plenty of choices in the box. These are the ones that come with the timeless. And definitely don't judge this by the looks because this CD-like design, which I thought will not be comfortable, actually is only on the outer side because as the insides here, we can see that it is very small and it is very lightweight as well. I think this is one of the most lightweight IEM I've ever seen. And the real advantage to this is it doesn't pull on the IEMs when worn. And as you can see, the fit is pretty much like this. Now, it uses quality metal connectors, Y splitters, and also the next shins here. And adjusting this is nice and easy. And to be honest, the only part that I don't like here is the case. I can't see this being a trademark from 7 Hertz at this point because the first sound notes deal go, that was extravagant. And now take a look at this full metal case. It is very bulky and heavy. It's extremely fancy, sure, but totally not practical for daily use. And so after a quite significant purchase, you still have to go out and buy, you know, a case or grab something that you have. For example, I use this pouch bag from whatever earbuds I used before. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I am I'm don't know about the choice here. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the video. I hope it was useful. Definitely subscribe for more tech and audio reviews. And I'll link a couple of videos you might like here. First is my 2022 True Wild Earbuds recommendations. And I'll reserve the other slot for my upcoming Moondrop Aria SE review, which slowly is becoming my favorite Moondrop item. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth, and I'll see you in the next one.